What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, go ahead, hit like and subscribe. We've got an awesome video for y'all today. Let's get into the shop. Now, I know this is a really long awaited video. Today, we're gonna finish the hard shell rooftop tent. Now, if you're new here, this is a tent that I started several years ago. I have a nearly full build series on this. Definitely go check that out. I also created a Facebook group called DIY Rooftop Tent Community. It's been awesome. We have a little over 16,000 members in there now. People have built all kinds of tents. A bunch of people have built this exact tent along with my uh, soft shell budget build. Uh, it's been just been a really good community. So if you're really interested in saving a lot of money and building your own rooftop tent, definitely go check that out. Now, where are we on this build? We're pretty much right where we left off in the last video, except I stripped everything down to bare wood and I've also taken everything apart. So this is the top of the hard shell and then I have the base right here. Uh, we'll get to that later. Today we're gonna start on something that I hadn't planned on doing originally, um, but I had a bunch of people ask me about it and I figured I'd show you guys. We're gonna be fiberglassing this thing. It was something I didn't think was necessary originally, but I think it'd be really cool to show you guys how to do that for those that wanna do this. So I've got everything stripped down. I got the wood clean. I've got some plastic around the base so I don't make just an enormous epoxy mess. So let me show you the products that we're gonna be using and then we'll get into it. Now we're gonna be using this marine epoxy. This is the same exact epoxy that I use building this whole thing. I get it from Boat Builder Central. I'll have all this linked in the description below. But this is a two to one epoxy that I've been really impressed with. It's a great price. And then we also have the four ounce fiberglass cloth. I got a few yards of it for this project. Um, the fiberglass cloth comes 50 inches wide but our tent is a little over 50 inches, so we'll run it this way. So we'll go 50 inches to the center and then from the center over the back edge. That should be plenty. This is really not hard to do at all. We've already used a bunch of epoxy in this entire build, as y'all know. So all we're basically doing is adding some fiberglass cloth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a final wipe down. We'll get our fabric laid out. We'll trim it up along the edges and then we'll start mixing up some epoxy. So let's get to it. All right, we got the fiberglass cloth all laid out. We have it trimmed up on the sides. We don't need a whole lot of excess around this thing. We have a little bit of an overlap right here. And also don't worry about any kind of wrinkles or, or creases or anything. It's gonna be totally fine. And I know it looks white, but once we wet out the fiberglass, everything's gonna go back clear and you'll be able to see right through it. I did wanna quickly mention the corners. This is probably the area that's gonna give you the most trouble because we're gonna smooth this down and then down. And what that does is it creates a little excess material. So if it's giving you trouble, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut straight up to this corner and then do kind of an overlap, kind of like we're wrapping a present or something. Um, so yeah, you might have to do a few little re relief cuts in the corner to get things to lay properly. This can be kind of frustrating sometimes, but the top should be pretty straightforward, but the corners might give you a little bit of trouble, but just wanted to mention that. So I have everything laid out that you're going to need, but quick reminder, before you get any epoxy mix up, make sure that you're wearing clothes that you don't care about. Um, this stuff's pretty messy. It's probably going to get on your shoes, going to get on your clothes. So I just wanted to remind you of that. So we got our gloves, stir stick, we got our uh, mixing cups. They do make uh, like ratio mixing cups that have the proper lines, but since we're just doing two to one, that's easy enough to mix up and I just got these at Lowe's. And then once we go to apply the uh, epoxy, we're just gonna want some scissors and our, a little squeegee to get that, get all the epoxy moved around. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure how much epoxy we're gonna need, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a full cup. I know we'll at least need that much. Um, so what I'll do is I'll probably do uh, 16 ounces of resin and then from 16 to 24 of hardener, and that'll be eight ounces of hardener. So let's get this mixed up. All right, before you put your hardener in, be sure you've double checked everything. Make sure that you're actually ready to go because once you put this in here, 
it's already starting the cure process. We have like 20 minutes, 25 minutes time to work with, maybe a little bit more than that, but just double check everything and then uh, put your hardener in. All right, here goes. Start with the center. Just gonna make a couple cuts in the corner here. Kind of overlap just like that. Not a big deal. One relief cut did that. I was having, you just kind of overlap them like that. Use your squeegee. And that should be solid, just like that. I didn't even have, I only cut up to right there and we were good. Just like that. Cut some of this off, we don't need this much material. Man, this is stressful. I'm just working around the corners, making sure, sometimes it wants to lift in some of these like indentions right here. Like when I press down here, it's kind of pulling away right here. So sometimes it's nice to have two of these guys press in that corner so that stays down. And then squeegee downward, kind of wet out all these sides. Once we have all the cloth saturated, we're just gonna go around this thing a bunch of times, um, making sure that everything's like, there's no air bubbles, nothing's like lifting up weird in a corner or something like that. But uh, I can feel this hypoxy starting to heat up on me, so it's um, coming kind of to the end of its life, workable life at least. But we're almost there. It's looking really, really good. All right, we just got done glassing the tent and it turned out really good. I was really impressed because I, I kind of thought it was gonna be just a total disaster to be honest with you. But uh, it really wasn't that bad at all. I'm definitely glad I went with the medium speed hardener. If you're new to this, you've never done this before, definitely go with slow speed, maybe medium speed. Um, I really wouldn't want to work with anything faster for this size project. But yeah, I have plenty of time to get it all wetted out. Now this took me about 45 minutes to an hour to complete. Um, it started off kind of frustrating. It, it kind of seems like once you get the fabric wet, it just doesn't want to like stay in place. Um, but the key is just to keep smoothing it out, keep put, kind of pressing it back in all the little nooks and crannies. And over time, while it's starting to set up and cure, the epoxy is getting stickier and stickier. 
it actually starts sticking and staying in place. Um, but yeah, you're gonna see when you know when you're squeezing it out, you'll you're pressing this way, you're pulling this way, and you're gonna you know have a spot where the fabric wants to lift off, and you just keep pressing it back in. I end up just going around this thing a ton of times, uh, just smoothing it out, and it slowly starts to get sticky and starts to hold on to the actual um, top. So yeah, you just gotta be really patient with it. So a couple other things, you wanna make sure that you cut your fabric off you know, right below the edge. You don't want a lot of fabric hanging off here because what happens is this fabric starts soaking up epoxy and gets heavy and starts pulling downward. And what that does is it, it's pulling, if it's pulling down here, it's pulling down up here as well. So you can have something shift or you can have an air bubble kind of, especially right in here, this can start to lift on you. So definitely shorten that up if you can. Um, the corners were not that big of a deal, but what I would do if I was gonna do it over is just go ahead and make your relief cuts um, before you wet it out. Just go ahead and cut those corners. You can kind of see the variations in the surface right here. We're gonna end up putting several more coats of a, just epoxy on here. We're not gonna do any more fiberglass cloth and a lot of that will just smooth right out. This is that other corner. Yeah, super happy with this. All right, we're gonna let this set up. Uh, we're gonna end up putting two or three more coats of just plain epoxy on here. We're done with the fiberglass cloth. Right now the board is not very smooth. You can kind of see the surface is kind of dimpled. And a few more layers of epoxy will help smooth this whole thing out. And then also when we go to sand, we'll be sanding just bare epoxy and it'll keep us from getting down into that fiberglass cloth. So we're gonna let this set up for probably five or six hours. We don't want it to fully cure before putting on our next coat. Um, so yeah, we're gonna let this set up and then we'll get to it. I'm getting ready to put my second coat of epoxy on. I missed my window of opportunity to apply that second coat before the first coat cured. It's not a huge deal, but if the first coat is cured, you're just gonna take some sandpaper. I got some 220 grit and lightly sanded the surface. Um, but it's much more ideal if you don't let it cure, you let it get like slightly tacky, um, and then go ahead and put that second coat on. Also, if you're doing this in cold weather, and you let your first coat cure, you might notice that there's like a greasy film that covers the surface. It's not a big deal. What you need to do is just get some warm water and some uh, like Dawn, like dish soap. Wipe the whole thing down real good. I did it a couple times, dry it off, and that's gonna take that greasy layer off. And then sand after that. Uh, if you don't take that film off, it will just gum up your sandpaper and it just, your sanding won't be easy for sure. Uh, so yeah, I've already got this thing sanded down. You can kind of see it's like a little dusty looking. I also sanded the overlap right here so that that blends in a little bit more. But you can see how uneven the surface is. And that's what we're gonna do with these next two coats is this should start to self level out as we put this on and it'll start looking a lot nicer. To wet out the fiberglass cloth, I end up using two, uh, two batches of resin and hardener. So that was uh, 16 ounces of resin, eight ounces of a hardener. For just a recoat, I'm just probably gonna just do one cup. That should be plenty for this. So yeah, let's get to it. Quick pro tip for working with epoxy, always double glove. It's just really nice to be able to shed a glove. You got clean hands and you can keep working. You know, this stuff is really messy, time's working against you. So it's just really nice to be able to shed that glove and keep, keep going at it. So that's the Remington tip of the day. All right, got the third coat of epoxy on. This is the second coat of epoxy after the initial wet out. But I made a really big mistake and the thing looks really bad. Check it out. This is cured up. You can see this is my third coat right here. This is from the previous coat all in here. This is already cured. 
looks wet, but it's already fully cured. So yeah, I've made a big mistake. Epoxy can be kind of tricky, so I want to share share what I did wrong, and we you know kind of kind of all learn from it. Now uh, it's a little bit cold in this shop. It was about 40 degrees when I applied this epoxy, so I thought it would be a good idea to warm up the epoxy. So I took the jugs of resin and hardener, I put them in the sink with hot water to heat those up. That does two things. It does speed up the cure time, and it also helps the epoxy flow better. Since it's warmer, it kind of goes on and kind of self-levels, especially on a big surface. But the thing I did wrong was I left it in the cup and kind of poured it as needed. So I'd pour a little bit, spread it around, pour a little bit, spread it around. So I had a lot of epoxy in my cup still, kind of still curing. And once you feel the cup heating up, you've run out of time. And that's exactly what happened. So what you want to do after your epoxy is mixed up, you want to get it out of your cup as quickly as possible. So especially if you have this big like flat surface, go ahead, pour it out on the surface and then start spreading it out. Um, when it's inside the cup, it's just going to start speeding up um, cure time. So get it out, get it on the surface, and then start spreading it out. And you should have a lot better working time. So instead of sanding all this mess down, I'm just going to add a fourth coat. Hopefully that'll just kind of level back out and uh, then we'll start sanding from there. All right, we got the fourth coat of epoxy on. And as you can see, it's a lot smoother than it was after the third coat that I screwed up. So instead of just sanding down that third coat, I just added another layer to help fill in those lows. But we still got a long way to go before we get it smooth. So yeah, before we can get this thing painted, we need a perfectly smooth surface. I'm not gonna keep on adding any layers of epoxy. I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna get that smooth. So we're actually gonna come back to the top. Let's go ahead and fiberglass the bottom, the base piece, and then we'll come back for the finishing process. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get this thing perfectly smooth. So let's knock out the base and I'll go from there. All right, we got the base all cleaned up, sanded down. And we're not gonna be fiberglassing the entire bottom like we did with the top, I just don't think it's necessary. We're just gonna be fiberglassing the rails basically, where all the, where all the pieces kinda of come together. We're gonna to be fiberglassing that, just so if there's any movement here, it's not gonna crack your paint. It's gonna stiffen that up. So we're just gonna cut our excess fiberglass cloth. We're just gonna cut it in like six inch strips to run down the edges. Now, just like on the top, the corners are gonna give you the most trouble. Uh, I haven't decided if I wanna just do small pieces over the corners first and then do your longer straight runs, but I'll show you when I get to it. So let's get our fiberglass cut up and then we'll start applying it to our, to our base. Alright, I got my strips of fiberglass cloth cut. It doesn't have to be perfect. I cut, these are about 8 inches or so. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to wet out the edges first and then apply the fiberglass cloth just because this is like one big piece. It doesn't want to stay in place very well. Um, it kind of just wants to fall off. So I think I'm going to go ahead and add the epoxy first, then kind of press in the fiberglass cloth into the, the resin that's already there. And then we'll add some on top if we, if we need to. So yeah, let's go ahead and mix up some epoxy and then uh, we'll get it on our base. All right, let's add the fiberglass. All right, we have it mostly on here. 
uh, once the fiberglass cloth is on, you really just have to babysit it for a while until that epoxy starts to cure up. And eventually the fiberglass will start sticking. Um, so sometimes you have to go around, you might find some bubbles, kind of press it back in place, smooth it out underneath. This might start to sag underneath some. Um, a lot of times it wants to lift in this edge right here. You gotta press that down in some places. You just really have to babysit it for a while. But there comes a point where you just have to leave it alone, let it cure, and then touch up later on. Uh, I will say this seemed harder to me than the, than the top. Just with all the curves and the, and the corners and everything, for some reason it just was more stressful and uh, seems a little bit more work. But it's coming along. I'm just gonna keep going around this thing over and over and over. Pressing in on, on some spots where it's trying to lift. You'll see I got some spots right here. We'll just keep going around it until it's all st stuck in place and then uh, then let it cure up. All right, I'm at the point where I have to quit touching it. This looks really good. We'll let this cure up. And I'll probably end up doing one more coat of just epoxy around this thing tomorrow after it cures up, but I'm happy with this. This went a lot better than I thought it would. All right, the epoxy is dry. Everything looks pretty good. The corners were by far the toughest part. I had to make some relief cuts and fold that over. And some of those areas uh, created high spots. So I think what I think I'll do is I'll just sand down some of these spots that uh, didn't lay down flat and then add another little piece of fiberglass right in here and then do a second coat of epoxy. And I have a couple little air bubble spots that I'll need to address. And then underneath, there might be some spots where it didn't adhere down there. It, we'll just go ahead and sand that flush, kind of blend that into the bottom. So yeah, we'll fix those problem areas and then uh, put a second coat of epoxy on this. All right, got it all sanded down. I didn't sand the fiberglass off. I just knocked down the high spots and then I feathered this into the bottom. Just kind of sanded that smooth, that transition there. Since we didn't fiberglass the entire bottom, just these edges, I wanted to feather that in. The only fiberglass that got removed is if there was a, um, like an air pocket. Had a little dry spot right there, but once we do the second coat of epoxy, that'll blend in. I really just want to make sure the fiberglass is covering our joints, especially our corners. The whole reason we're doing this is so that uh, to limit the amount of movement in these joints so that our paint doesn't crack. So yeah, this looks good. We're gonna um, add a second coat of epoxy and then probably move on to the top. All right guys, we have both the top and the bottom, both fiberglass, I think that's where I'm gonna wrap things up. Really not a super hard process, really happy with the way it came out other than my little mistake. But overall, fiberglass is really not that hard. Epoxy can sometimes be a little tricky when you're dealing with fluctuating temperatures, but really not that hard to do at all. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful. In the next video we do on the hard shell, I'm not sure if it's gonna be the very next video I do, but we're gonna get this thing prepped, ready for paint, and we'll get this thing painted. We're actually gonna be trying something new. I'm gonna use a product called Glass Microspheres. We're gonna be creating a fairing compound to smooth the surface out. We're shooting for a near automotive finish, so we gotta get this thing nice and leveled out, and we have plenty of imperfections to fix. So we'll get that all prepped, ready, and get that painted in the next video, so y'all be looking out for that. But yeah, y'all be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next video.